Okay. Finding a boy that's not a wanker is impossible. Well, Pfizer, uh, Ochti, I have news for you. Birds of a feather flock together. If you're finding that the only boys you're coming across are wankers, it's probably because you're a wanker. So look to yourself because you're attracting what you are. Okay? Right, SJ is not coming on. Okay. Uh, is a woman who only wears hijab just before marriage or just after university a red flag? I mean, look, uh, if you met me when I was 16, I was a walking red flag, bro. You know, and then Allah subhanahu reformed me, walillah alhamd, in terms of my deen, practicing my deen. Okay? So, who knows? Maybe she has repented and she's, you know, she wants to start practicing. I don't know. You're going to have to judge it. Judge it, you know, as you go. One thing I will say is this. I was once in contact with a sister and the sister didn't wear hijab, but I was impressed by her character. And I said to her sister, look, I'm willing to consider marrying you, but you've got to fix up. You've got to pattern up your hijab and abaya and all of that. She said to me, marry me first, then I'll wear hijab. I said to her, la habibti. Doesn't work like that. Doesn't work like that. And she insisted upon this. I got in the end, I think she wanted the whole big Asian wedding thing where she could look, you know, do her thing basically. So, if she says to you, I'll wear it after marriage, no, not doing it. Not doing it. Bro, there are girls that are asking for 50K and 5K as much. Well, ESSJX, what's your name? ESSJX, so I can call you by your name. Yes, five grand in comparison to 50 is very cheap. But five grand is still a lot of money. Do you understand? Okay, I'll tell you this. The mahar that the Prophet ﷺ paid towards his wives was around 1,500 grams of silver. Depending on the purity of silver, that's between four to 800 pounds. Four to 800 pounds. The mahar that he requested for Fatima, radiallahu anha, I believe was the equivalent of some shield. It was next to nothing. The mahar Fatima is like 80 pounds. I understand the fear that girls have with a low mahar. The thinking is, if I offer a low mahar, I'm basically saying to men that I'm cheap. Okay, Asma. Am I correct in saying this, Asma? You feel like if I make a mahar that's too low, I'm basically telling men I'm cheap. Why the hell would I want to tell men that I'm cheap for? And I'll say to you this. If you put a hefty price tag on yourself, you're commoditizing yourself. You're objectifying yourself. You're selling yourself. When you put hefty price tags on your head. Furthermore, and more importantly, heavy mahars strip from the baraka of the marriage and this is more important they strip from the baraka of the marriage asma they take away from the baraka of the marriage and they make the man if he agrees to it even though he was a fool to agree to it in the first place and it's his fault he begins to resent you he begins to ha ha harbor ill feelings towards you he'll remind you every single day i have debts because of you even though the truth is it's his fault and he agreed to it but i'm just telling you what happens so, less mahar, the better. Allahu Akbar, Asma, I respect that. I respect that. But Asma, uh, Ukhti, uh, with respect, sister, inshallah, put your hijab on. Jazakallah khair. Right. Sayyidi, let's have a look. 100% uh, agree. I had issues with my father and found it hard to respect men. I was very hard work for my husband. I was very hard work. My husband changed that because he took, because he took me away from negative influence. Thank you, Sadie, for sharing this. I really appreciate it. I love it when a woman shares something from her own personal experience with it relates to what I talk, talk about. So thank you very much. Thank you, Sadie. Gentlemen, please pay attention. Please pay attention. Okay. What if he, she is a Riva and family is a Samfa? Okay, Bilal. What if he, she is a Riva and family is Islamophobic like mine? Am I a red flag? Okay, Bilal, I respect you, you know, putting yourself out like that. The truth is this, Bilal. I don't know what type of family you come from. I will say this. If, and let's, let's take you out the picture right now because it's too personal. Let's use George. If George has just embraced Islam, but George comes from a family of crack addicts and drug dealers and so on. I'm using an extreme example on purpose, okay? Uh, 
If George can recognize that George has spent a, long, a large amount of his youth around a negative influence, now George is empowered to take action in fixing himself. And it goes back to the beginning of this live when I said, those individuals who recognize there might be a problem and then take action upon it, they are exceptions to the rule. So if George has come from a negative family environment and he recognizes that that environment has most probably had a negative impact on him and then he takes action to rectify that, George no longer is involved in our discussion. George is an exception to the rule. But again, exceptions are few and far between. I hope that makes sense. Okay, Janaid, what, what, Mahdi, what price would you expect to pay for Mahar? Gentlemen, I've never paid more than £150 for Mahar. I never paid more than £150, okay? And um, all of that, that price came from my wives. I didn't make that request. It didn't come from me. It came from them. It came from them. Because we were looking at more important things. Do you understand? Like, are we compatible? Do I, uh, can I love you? Can you love me? Can you have my kids? So on and so forth. Can we make it work, etc.? And, and also, by the way, like my, my wife that I'm with now, I, I paid her, it was £80 mahar, mahar fatimi, £80 mahar. But I took her away on a lovely honeymoon and we had a nice time in Tunisia and so on. We had a great time. It was a beautiful time. Okay? So let's get our minds away from this mahar thing because high mahars take away from the baraka of the marriage. They strip from it and they make a man feel resentful towards you. He resents you, even though it's his fault for agreeing. Okay. Yes, my guy, DM me. DM me. Akaradas, DM me. Okay, Amina, I, I don't feel qualified to answer your question. Can you explain the concept of mahar and essentially why it exists in Islam? I'm going to avoid that question because I feel like it's a shari question and I'm not qualified to answer it. But it's a good question. Zakallah khair. It's not why do I think there's a high mahar take away from the barakah. There's a hadith that I'm thinking of and I can't remember it off the top of my head. But that's what I am referring to. It strips from the barakah of the marriage. But I can't remember it, so I'm going to be careful here. Mujahid, it's hard, 80 pounds, it's hard to find a female who would want that less. Look, if a woman sees a man as a man whom she genuinely looks up to, she will, like, just as one of the sisters said, she will want to pay you to take her. So gentlemen, we're going to flip this back on you. The question is not where do I find a woman to accept that type of mahar? No, 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 no. That's far too unempower disempowering. The question is what type of man must I become in order for mahar to become an insignificant topic between me and my wife-to-be? That's the question. What type of man must I become in order for the topic of mahar to be inconsequential? D burn that into your brain and focus on that. Everything else will take care of itself. Okay? Asia, this is not fine. And I have addressed this many times. I have a live already. Uh, IG Live, I had a discussion with a Caucasian lady. Her name was, um, I forget her name. You'll find it in my feed. I've discussed this question. You can go and find it there. Okay. Uh, you really want to do this, Faisal? Well? Okay. Men always complaining about paying mahar for one wife, but always want to go on about marrying four. You really want? All right, Faisal, let's go live. Let's go live. Where are you going, Faisal? Pfizer. Pfizer, Pfizer. Yalla, Pfizer, let's go live. Right. How much mahar would you ask for my own daughters? Firstly and foremostly, I'll put that into my daughter's hands. But I am... I am raising my daughters with the mindset that I already have. 
that the mahar is an inconsequential part of the marriage. What matters is what type of man am, am I marrying? That's what matters. Pfizer, come on, man. Let's go live. Why do you, why do you cancel Pfizer? You are, let's do this. Let's have that discussion right now. <sighs> Ooh, that's a difficult one. Okay. Thoughts on porn addiction? On porn addiction effects on marriage. Well, I mean, look, gentlemen, I'm no porn expert, as in porn addiction expert. Um, but I remember being sent an article by someone who mentioned something to do with the hormones in the brain. It starts releasing an excessive amount of uh, dopamine to the point where you start becoming numb to this. What I'll say to you is this. What is porn? It's a highly idealized, um, concept of what sexual intimacy should be like. The problem with porn is that after you've watched porn, you come back to your wife and she just feels so basic, so regular, so normal that you can't get aroused by her. It's impossible for her to arouse you after you've been watching that madness. And this is the problem with porn. You start to get what? Erectile dysfunction. And now you start buying Viagra thinking that your issues are biochemically related. Now they're not bio, nothing to do with your hormones. It's to do with your brain, your brain. You have accustomed yourself to a very high level of arousal and now your, your average wife can no longer arouse you. It's a really dangerous drug, porn. Really dangerous. Can make you, it, can, it can cause you to have erectile dysfunction. Erectile dysfunction. You're not going to feel like a man if you can't get your your willy up. You don't feel like a man. So stay away from porn. I don't care. I don't care what anyone says about porn, that a little bit of it is good for you. No, no, nonsense. Rubbish. Now, I'm not even going to talk about it from an Islamic point of view because you already know what Islam says. I'm going to talk about it from a logical point of view. You open that door a little bit, you open it just a little bit, the whole thing will flood. You create a tiny opening in a dam, a tiny opening, just a little, a little bit of water through, the whole dam will burst. The whole thing will burst. So stay away from it. Completely stay away from it. Right. Can, can make men more aggressive. I didn't know this. I didn't know this. Mirsa, I don't know my goal or purpose, but I'm grinding with uni. Is that high value? First of all, congratulations. I salute you for grinding with uni. Second of all, no, that does not make you high value. But if you can start make, creating results out of whatever, whatever it is you're grinding on, and part of that equation is wealth, then yes, you would eventually become high value. So keep going. If a girlfriend zones, is there still a chance for relationship marriage? Bro, why do you want to try and get with someone who zoned you in the first place? Move on, bro. Move on. The answer is very unlikely. Move on. Next. Right. What about the high value man if she wants ten k and should he pay? Okay. What about the high value man and if she wants ten k, should he pay? Look. I'll say this. I've answered a similar question to this in the past. There's levels to this game, right? If you're royalty, if you come from a billionaire family and you're marrying a girl from a billionaire family, obviously they're going to be expecting a little something. Do you understand? They're going to be expecting something. So it's according to the level that you're playing at. It's according to the level that you're playing at. A £20,000 watch is a lot of money for the regular person. But for a billionaire, that's quite a cheap watch. Billionaires don't wear £20,000 watches. They wear £200,000 watches. So it's according to the level that you're playing at. But I speak for the masses, for the average general man. That's who I'm speaking for, not for the billionaire or these exceptions to the rule. Riyadh, again, like I say, very unlikely. Okay, what about the guy whose brother, uh, the brother whose wife cheated on him? 
How was he going to leave her when he knew he'd never see the kids again? No, you don't know that. You don't know that. He might go through a ton of difficulty in seeing his kids. Uh, but let me tell you this. That difficulty that he will go through in being able to see his kids is not as bad as the humiliation he will suffer as a man by persisting in that marriage. This is about the, the lesser of two evils right here. Okay? What if he plans to become high value and is working towards that but still broke or unwealthy? Well, again, if I, if I go to the bank and say to them, excuse me, Mr. Banker, um, I'm broke right now, but I plan on being a billionaire in 10 years' time. Please can I get a mortgage on a 50 million pound home based upon my plans? What's the banker going to say to me? No, gentlemen. There's no brownie points for intentions. None at all. There's no brownie points for trying or for grinding. Only results. So get on your, cro your, cro your craft. Be on your craft. And be patient for the next 10 years. Because there's no brownie points for trying. Ah, Barakallah. Om Yusuf. Jazakallah khair. The most blessed nikah is the one with the least expenses. Again, the most blessed nikah is the one with the least expenses. What does that mean? The mafhum al-mukhalifa, the, the opposite understanding is the least blessed marriage is the one with the most expenses. You got it? Right. Minhaj, I hope I answered that question already. Okay. Tips for young men having insecurities when they are going to get married and books you recommend? Well, it depends on what type of insecurities you are having to begin with. That's what I will say. Uh, so what type of insecurities you suffer from? And then go about trying to fix those insecurities by, yes, buying books, learning, educating yourself, getting outside your comfort zone and so on. Insecurities are normal, by the way, perfectly normal. Okay. Brother, you say not giving women attention makes you more attractive, but is this also true with men? I have personally find people try to get my attention i can't see the rest of that question i didn't say don't give them attention i didn't say that i simply said it needs to be limited particularly during the courting phase marriage is there's different rules for marriage i need to be clear on this the rules for courtship for dating for courting courtship whatever you want to call it they are not exactly the same as they are for marriage but during the courting phase you need to first you get her attention you have to get her attention by you being the one who approaches her. You know, drop her a compliment here and there and so on. Then once you have, have her attention, you need to pull back a little bit. Because if you go too much with that, if you go too far with that, you will lose her attention. I will prove it to you. How do you melt, sorry, how do you bend a piece of metal? You heat it, right? How do you make sure that once you have bent the metal, it stays in that position? What do you do? You dip it in cold water. That's pulling back. Now it will stay there. Equally, this is a woman. How do you melt her? How do you bend her into your direction? By approaching her with kind words, speaking nice to her and so on. Now she's here. How do you keep her there? You dip her in cold water and by pulling back. What will happen if you don't do that? I'll tell you what will happen. When a piece of metal is still extremely hot, burning hot, it's bent, but guess what? It can unbend itself very easily in any direction. Very easily. So you have to pull back on the validation and the compliments and so on in order to keep her there. Now, I'll go one step further. Have you seen what happens to a piece of metal if it's subjected to extreme cold for too long? Do you know what happens to it? It shatters. It breaks. So if you pull back the attention and the validation that you're given to a woman for too long, you will shatter her, you will break her, you will lose her attention. You'll lose her. So the idea is what? Hot and cold and hot and cold. Guys, look, I don't like this. I don't like it. I know it sounds like games. I know it sounds like manipulations, but I didn't make women. I didn't make them. I'm just telling you what they respond to. And a lot of women will be on this chat right now disagreeing. And I say to you ladies who disagree, 
you don't know what's good for you. You don't know. You haven't clocked it. You don't understand why you don't like the nice guy. It doesn't make any sense to you. You can't, you're, you're so baffled. And I'm here to tell you, it's because they're the nice guy. They heated you, but then they didn't fix you in that position by dipping you in cold water. They need to dip you in cold water. It's the only way to keep your attention. Don't blame us. And we didn't make you. This is just the instruction manual of how to deal with you. Right. Okay, Pfizer. I'm just saying, Mahar is only the start payment of marriage. Your pockets are going to hurt way more, especially with more ones. Yes, yes, absolutely. Absolutely. And look, when, when we're talking about Mahar, I'm talking about men who are trying to get married for the first time. Young men, typically. Typically young men trying to get married for the first time. They're not thinking about two, three, four wives. He's thinking about just getting married and, you know, enjoying a woman in halala. For those men, that's what I'm talking about. If he wants to take a second and a third and a fourth wife, of course he's going to have to be a man of means and a man of resources. I get that. But don't, you're thinking too far ahead. Ayan, you agree? Respect. Right. Nadia, let's go live. Let's go live, Nadia. Okay. Yeah, I'm going to address this question right now. Asia, why do you view it as permissible to be? What are you talking about? It's not permissible to beat women. Where did you get that? Where did you get that? Okay, Asia, let's go live. Where you are? Asia, send me a request, please. Send me a request. Oh, I'm going to find you. Here we go. Go live with Asia. Yalla, ask me your questions, Asia, on, the, on, on a live so we can have a chat together. Right. How can people learn at a fast rate and stay on it? I don't get that. Asia, yalla, pick up the phone. I heard that Maha doesn't have to be. I don't know. Ask this question to a sheikh. I don't know. Yep. There is an abundance of beautiful, young, and fertile women, but there's a scarcity of high value men. Yes, there is a scarcity of high value men, but gentlemen, before you get too excited, you don't get brownie points for wanting to be a high-value man. You don't get brownie points for intending to be a high-value man. I'm back up. I can't watch it. Asia, answer the phone. You don't get brownie points for intending to be a high-value man. So yes, you're right in principle, but high-value men are few and far between. They're few and far between. Asia, I'm going to send you another, another invite. <laughs> Declined. Lish, why? Olympic sprinters. <laughs> oh dear. Okay, I don't know. That's a lot of money carbon right now. Asia, you don't have. Put just cover the phone. I don't care right now. Cover the phone. Cover it. All right. You and send me a request. Cover your camera. Okay. When is my wife coming on next? Well, if you have what, what do you have lined up for her? Let me know. S y e underscore z. Okay, Luge, uh, Lou Jane, uh, apologize if I said that wrong. A bit off topic, but have you considered talking about other topics other than marriage and relationship? This is my niche. This is my niche, Lou Jane. Yes, before in the past, I, I have a, a passion for business, and that's what I used to talk, talk about. It's like telling Gary, telling Gary Vee, can you stop talking about business? This is my niche. This is what I talk about. But if you have any ideas that you want me to talk about, and I have knowledge on it, more importantly, then yeah, we can discuss it. <laughs> I was once blind as these girls, but as soon as you get what Mahdi says, you start to realize what's good for you. Ayana, I salute you, Ayan. I salute you. What are my thoughts on beta? Gentlemen, you can't beat women. What, what type of question is this? I mean, if you're referring to the TikTok video I made, I was confessing a mistake that I made. It's an epic mistake. Do you understand? Tayyib, yes, how you doing, Akhi? Most loved Adam, what's going on, boys? How are we doing? Okay, when a man, let's go to this. 
When a man speaks about the importance of virginity of a wife, women will answer the same back. Will a man's previous sexual partners have an effect? I can't see the rest of the question. I'm presuming you're saying on his, his mental health and so on. Again, I, I will that forward you to the Institute of Family Studies. You will see a study on there that shows the, the correlation between BPD, by borderline personality disorders, or marital happiness, one of the two, and the number of sexual intimate partners. It declines at a significantly higher rate or lower rate, whichever way you want to look at it, for women than it does for men. Okay? It still affects men, according to this study, but women are far more affected. Now, again, if, if you're asking this question from a shara'i perspective, well, from a shara'i perspective, the pure are for the pure, the impure for the impure. Right? Other ideas of mahar, I don't know. Allah on. Good question. Do you think it's possible to be a high value male alpha if you are a wage slave, have a boss? I don't think having a boss makes you beta. I don't think that's, that's the issue at hand here. Whether you have a job or you own a business, that's not really the issue at hand. The issue is, yes, wealth is one side of the equation. So you might have a job, right? But if you're the CEO of Google, you're a multimillionaire. So it doesn't really matter. Uh, but what really matters is, so once you've got that wealth side of the equation locked down, now we have to look at your character, your iman, and so on and so forth. Those other areas that come together to make or create a high-value meal. So no, I don't think a job is relevant to it, to be honest with you. Very good. Once again, Woke Mind has brilliant, brilliant statements. Men are concerned about a woman's sexual past Women are concerned about a man's financial future. Very good. And very true as well. Safe. Thank you, bro. Appreciate it. Okay, good. Murad, what, actually, what is actually an appropriate price for Mahat? Well, we just go to the Prophet, as I mentioned before. 1,500 grams of silver. Depending on purity, that's four to $800. The Mahar Fatimi is much less than that, around 80 pound. So you could say, let's say cap it at about 1,000 pound. Well, khalas. And then of course, you're going to provide for her, take care of her, her finance. This is not about being stingy. This is not about stingy men. No, this is just about a principle here, that a low Mahar is better, period. Any books you'd recommend to read? 48 Laws of Power. You must read that. If you don't read that, you know, you're finished. Okay. Okay. Why are guys below 25 on here? Roshan, Habibi, I've seen your message, bro. I apologize for not getting back. I will get back to you. Huh? I will get back to you. Why are guys below 25 on here asking for marriage tips? And thank you, Roshan. I appreciate it. Uh, when they're not ready, coming for someone who wanted marriage uh, when I was 20, but now I was a can't see the that question. The reason why is because most of the, 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 the gentlemen on here are Muslim. And they cannot fulfill their sexual desires outside of a marriage setup. Outside of marriage. So that's why, bro. That's why. The only way they can fulfill their needs is through halal, is through marriage. So that's why that discussion is happening. Otherwise, I'd agree with you. Better not to get married young. Do you implement what Robert Greene talks about in his books? Yes, I do all the time. I do all the time. Um, I put up a video on TikTok and my reels recently that might have confused you. If it confused you, I was implementing law 42 of the laws of power. Go and check it out yourselves. Okay. Amina, would you allow your daughters to be a second or third wife? It's not up to me. It's up to them. It's up to them. When my daughters get married for the first time, I'd prefer that they marry a, a man who is single. Now you see with my, with my girls, I am raising them in a manner whereby I will set them up nicely to be very appealing for high value men. And it's easier now than ever to be a desirable woman to a high value man. You know why? Because feminism is so rife and high value men can't stand feminists. And I said to my girls, I said to them, it is easier for you now than it's ever been before to be a desirable prospect to a high value man. Very easy. Because all of these feminists are doing their thing in that feminist corner over there. They just left the playing field wide open for you. Very easy. So, yeah, they'll have a head start, inshallah.
Okay, uh, Asya. It's hard though to see your girlfriends asking so much mahar and getting it. Why would I ask for the set for for less? I'm presuming you're asking. I I get it. I hear you. I hear you. I understand what you're saying. But you need to ask yourself, Asya, what's more important to you, a high mahar or a happy marriage? I've got a question for you, Asya. Your girlfriends who are getting these high mahars, are they happily married? Not what they put up on TikTok and Instagram. No, 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 no. What they talk about with you. Are they happily married? Find out. Okay. If you want to come live, send me a thing. You say you shouldn't beat women, but what if the woman isn't submissive? How do men handle this? This is a great question, Sadie. And again, this is why I, I started this live with how do you vet for a good man and a good woman? Because if you vet correctly, you will never have to address this question in the first place. You will never have to. But if you've ended up with you know, a difficult man or a difficult woman, let's say you've got a woman who is not submissive and you know, she's, she's a wild one, good luck to you. Beating her is not going to fix her, by the way. A beating her is not going to fix her. That's not going to fix her. Good luck to you. You know, you've got problems, my friend. You've got problems. Mariam, I believe you sent me a message on earlier, didn't you? Let's go live. Go live with Mariam. Mariam bint Mo. Nope. Ah, oh, Asia, okay, not Asia. No, you don't want to go live. Well, all the Olympic sprinters have joined the live today. Okay, let's define high-value man. All right, gentlemen, high-value man, we can define it very simply. A high-value man is a man whom many women are attracted to and a man whom many other men want to be like. Think of a man that you know of whom tons of women are attracted to and tons of men wish they were like. That's a high value man. You don't like talking on life. Okay. And Mahdi, I get it that I still don't think that's a good enough reason for marriage. Just satisfy their desire. I mean, it's the ultimate reason for marriage, my brother. I don't know if you're Muslim. I don't know if you're Muslim, my man. Uh, if you're not Muslim, maybe this is difficult for you to understand. But if you're Muslim, then you should know that a man cannot satisfy his desires outside of a marital setup. He does not have a choice. And I think this is very good because otherwise, what are you going to have? You're going to have a bunch of men fucking your daughter and then just leaving her. Is that what you want? Uncommitted sex with your daughter? Do you want a boy, a man, having uncommitted sex with your daughter? Is that what you want? We don't want that. No, we want a strong, solid family society. That's what we want. A strong, grounded society. We don't want boys ravaging our girls left and right. We don't want that. We want a man to commit to her, take care of her, and so on. If he's immature and young, well, find another man then. But we don't want boys randomly ragging our girls. Yeah, well, don't give her to an immature guy then. Very simple. When do men <laughs> when do men get infertile? They pretty much don't. My wife was showing me the uh, fertility rates of women and the fertility rates of men. A 50-year-old man is more fertile than a 20-year-old woman. And think about it. It's logical. Look, ladies, you produce one egg a month. One. One egg a month. Just one. That's it. One single egg. Men produce 150 million sperm per milliliter of sperm, of ejaculate. 150 million sperm per milliliter of ejaculate. It's like a billion dudes up in there. Each time my man busted. Do you understand? So. That's a lot of kids. 
Right. Okay. What would it be for this? Would you? Oh, I don't get that question. What questions do you ask to know if Pinto will be there? This is a good question. What questions do you ask to know if a potential wife will be obedient to her husband? You don't really ask questions. Look, when you go to a job interview, nobody puts their hand up and says, yeah, I was an absolute asshole to my previous boss. You don't ask questions. You can shit test her. You can test her. Or you can, better still, you can go and find out from her family. Find out what's the reputation of this family like. What's the reputation of this family? Are mum and dad still together? Is it a nuclear household? Does she come from a nuclear household? What's the mum's behavior like with dad? What's the dynamic there? You want to start looking at her family more than her. Russell Brand said, every asshole can be nice for 10 minutes. Even an asshole can be nice for 10 minutes. You don't ask questions. You've got to find out in, in better ways than that. Roshan. Let's get Roshan on. Roshan. Assalamu alaikum wa How are you? Uh, what are you saying, Roshan? Good, man. Alhamdulillah. How you been? Uh, alhamdulillah. How are you keeping, my guy? You good? Alhamdulillah. I'm still breathing. You know good I mean? to so, see you again, man. Me and Roshan go back way back. ACM long days. time. Long <laughs> time. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, bro. Do you know what um, I've got obviously a question and then I have some advice. One's from my homie. Well, both of them from my homie. Sure. I'm obviously married. I've got a daughter, obviously, as you know. But yeah. Um, so the first one, my homie obviously a while ago was saying this. He was having this issue. He's 23 years of age. He was having this issue, but he didn't know how to address it. Right. And obviously, I love the work that you're doing. So obviously, it's only right that I ask you so you might have something helpful for him. Thank you. So he was saying that he was getting a lot of issues, well, a few, when he was speaking to females. Obviously, respect to all the sisters out there too. Oh, so he was getting to know them as he was. Um, and when the critical point came, um, they'd always say to him that, oh, when we get married, we don't want to work. You pay for everything. You pay for our lifestyle and everything. Okay. He didn't know how to obviously handle that sort of situation. So he'd walk away. Right. Obviously, he asked me for advice. I personally, I was never in that sort of situation. So I did, so didn't know what to say to him. Yeah. So that's question number one. How would you um, give advice to someone like that? So Where a girl says to him, I want you to pay for everything. Yeah, so when we get married, for example, this is what's happening to him. He's like, you pay for the bills, you pay for my car, you pay for my lifestyle. I don't want to work. I never want to work. You see, the problem here is this, is that in principle, I agree with her. Yeah. The issue I take with her is when she's going out of her way and laying the law like that, I start to have suspicions of her intentions. Do you mm. see? Yeah, yeah. In principle, I agree that yeah. this, is, this a man should, we're providers, we should take yeah, care of our wife. Right. Yeah. This is made. Uh, this is the right that they have over us, even from Allah. My mm. issue is when she starts laying the law like that. Mm. I start to grow suspicious of women like that. Yeah. So, do you understand? Like it's sort of yeah. reading between the lines, sort of thing. It's like, oh, yeah. like, well, what's this girl's intentions? So yeah. I would be suspicious of her. I'm not gonna lie to you. Yeah, for, it's just that he was he was thinking that it's just because our generation from the ages of like obviously. I'm not saying every female's like that, every man's like that, of course not. Yeah. But he was saying in our generation from the ages of 20 to 26, obviously we live in a Western world, so it's quite tough finding a balance of being for him, he was saying, and someone who has that understanding. So he thought the majority of the girls that he's going to speak to are going to come across like that. Mm. So obviously the advice that you've given me today, obviously I'll give over to him. And mm. uh, second thing was obviously the matter thing. I've got a friend mm. who's obviously now, alhamdulillah, is getting married. Sure. But... Um, it's taken him a while longer to save up for his wedding because the mahar that uh, his wife to be asked for uh, was around fifteen thousand. Right. And obviously he wasn't willing to pay it, but at the end of the day, um, he had no choice. But if he was to take it back into the start, what sort of advice would you give to a brother like that if he's not willing to pay but he's got no choice? Okay, there's always a choice. Firstly and foremostly, mm -hmm. never think you don't have a choice. You always have a choice. There's always a third option. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Second thing is this. When he said to her, I don't want to pay 15 grand. What was her response? I don't really know. He just said that he, she, wouldn't, she wouldn't budge her and her father wouldn't budge on that some whatsoever. Okay. Then what I will say is this. Gentlemen, it's very important to understand. Pay attention. When a woman looks at you and thinks to herself, you know what? This, this man is the man. He is the man. I, I very much doubt I can do better than this. 
-hmm. When she looks at you and thinks like that, she forgets about mahab. Some of the girls have already written this on this chat at the beginning. They said, if I find a man like that, I will want to pay him mahab. Mm -hmm. So again, it's an indication to me. If she's insisting upon this high mahar, it's because in her mind, she's thinking, this guy ain't all that. He's not all that. So I need to secure some bag just in case, uh, you know, shit goes sideways. That's how oh. I would interpret that situation. That she doesn't see him as all that. Because if she did, believe me, she would make concessions for him. She would you, say, would, would you say it's a cultural thing or would you say it's just people with their own demands these days? Yeah, I mean, I've, again, this is why we're talking about it in the first place. A lot of girls seem to be getting very high mahas, you know. Mm -hmm. and, but I, I blame the men. I don't blame the girls. And I'll tell you why. Who's the one paying the mahad? The men are paying the mahad. These donuts mm -hmm. are the one paying it. If you didn't pay it, if there was no demand that was yeah. being fulfilled, we wouldn't have a problem. Yeah. Prices only go up when there's a lot of demand. But if you take that demand away, guess what? The price comes back down again. Yeah. So it's in the hand of the brothers. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, to answer yeah. your question, that's an indication to me that she don't rate him like that, bro. <laughs> I know that's harsh. But, but that's you got to say how it is at the end of the day, isn't it? you got to say how it is. It is what it is. I mean, we'll ask the ladies on the chat. Ladies, if you came across a man and you felt like this man is the man, like there is no way I can do better than him. Would you make concessions for him on the mahar or would you still insist upon your 15 grand? Okay, let me word it differently. If you insisted upon your 15 grand, you'd lose him. Would you be willing to, to scrap that mahar? We'll see what the ladies will say. Absolutely. You see that? Absolutely. Absolutely. Again, if she doesn't look at him and think, nah, like this man is the man, and she's thinking, I don't know about this guy, man. It's kind of 50-50, but whatever. Let's secure some back from him. That's when you're not going to be able to compromise with her. So I say to the brothers, once again, the ball is in your court. Yeah. If he thinks you're average, it's probably because you're average. Probably because you're average. Level up. I wouldn't sign a prenup, someone goes. <laughs> Mashallah. Uh, uh, was, who said that? Uh, Sadie, yeah, well, you wouldn't sign a prenup. What if you, Sadie, were the multimillionaire and your husband was broke? Would you demand he signs a prenup? Yeah, man signing a prenup. <laughs> Roshan, my Take care, good, though, yeah? I love the work, man. Love Take the care, work. Habibi. I appreciate it. Walaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Right. If he has value in himself, no amount of financial value can match his stature. Absolutely. Absolutely. Right. All right. It's nine o'clock already. Zakim Allah I really appreciate it, guys. Thank you for joining once again. And I'll catch you on the next one. Questions in my inbox, I'll get back to you when I can. Take care. Have a great evening. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah.